Yeah, let's go to some health matters from there. Now, new cancer cases have increased by 33% in the past decade. That's according to the World Health Organization. Now, so-called lifestyle cancers linked to smoking, a bad diet, and sun exposure have jumped, particularly in rapidly developing countries. But what is the true cost of cancer treatment? And can ordinary people like you and me really afford it? Well, joining us this morning to discuss it is ProfMed Medical Scheme CEO Craig Comrie. Craig, good morning. Good morning. And thanks for your time this morning. Thank so. You. Would you say that everybody, every South African needs some kind of cancer cover? Well, I don't think people try and get cover based on the fact that they, they're going to get cancer. Yeah. So uh, I think that's, that's a bit of a stretch of, mm. of, of, of the, the view. I think one of the things that we are seeing is um, the emergence of new cancers and the fact that um, technology is actually being advanced to such an extent that we're catching cancer a lot earlier. Mm. So there are a lot more people on treatment and the treatment itself is actually becoming very costly to cover. Okay, so at what point would you be able to get the cover that you need? I mean, where, what stage of your illness would you judge whether there's a family history? Would you have to have a bit of a scare first? When would you advise or would it be p people of a certain age or over a certain age? How would you decide whether you should be one of them? Yeah, definitely their, their family um, history considerations. Mm -hmm. So if you have a family history where there has been cancer present, most definitely you need some cover. Um, the extent of the cover is always the question. Yeah. And so once you are diagnosed with, with cancer, it is very difficult to get cover due to underwriting issues. Mm -hmm. And so you have to plan well ahead of time and try get medical scheme coverage if you can um, early on in life rather than later on in life. But certainly as age progresses, your risk of, of getting cancer also increases. And so we have seen probably a 30 to 40 percent increase in people being treated on cancer, which has increased the overall cost to even the insurance groupings like medical schemes and other dread disease covers as well. So what are some of the things you need to be looking for when you're out there looking for, for, for some type of cover? Um, yeah. uh, what are the, the, the nitty gritties? What are, what's in the fine print that we should be worried about? Yeah, I think that there is a lot in the fine print and so you always get what you're paying for. So you have to look quite carefully at the cover you are going to get. So often when it comes to cancer treatment, even from a medical mm. scheme perspective, there are limitations on the type of, of treatment that is covered. So um, uh, the regulation within the medical schemes environment means that schemes have to cover a certain level um, of treatment. However, it's, it's usually not a comprehensive level of treatment. And part of that is due to the affordability issues. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the treatments in terms of the newly developed biologics in the marketplace mm -hmm. that treat cancers have, have been um, in excess of two million rand a year to treat and, and often um, your insurer or your medical scheme won't be able to cover that in full. So would there be, is there cover that, that does cover it in full or would you always expect to pay something out of your own pocket for, for treatment? So there's so many different types of cancers and so what you have to actually do is ensure you understand what cancer you have and then understand what your treatment plan is. And once you understand that, make sure that together with either your insurer or your medical scheme specifically, you understand where cover ends and where you're going to have to, yeah. to, to pay in. And so it's one of the first things you should do once you are diagnosed. <clears throat> but it is quite difficult. The, um, when you are firstly diagnosed, the financial position that you're in is not really a consideration. Yeah. But it will, over the long term, have a significant influence on the treatment you have access to. Okay, so it seems that uh, you really need to, to do your homework. You really yeah. actually need to be to be shopping around. And uh, I suppose just, you know, I, I once did something as a favor to someone. I said, just take this, just in case. And if you don't, then you'll get a portion of this back a little later on. I mean, what are the, the sort of the schemes? When I say schemes, I mean that in, that you should be wary of. People, you know, sort of seeming to be worried about you and, and taking care of your future. Yeah, I think... Um, Absolutely. Make sure you're speaking to the right person. So um, certainly the right broker would help you in terms of analyzing the type of cover that, that you can purchase. But when it comes to an individual, you need to put a group together, speak to your GP, speak to your, your family, um, and then consider what your broker is, is counseling you mm -hmm. to do. Um, when you look deeper into the types of cover that you have, be very clear in terms of, of the restrictions. A lot of medical scheme options or the basic options would have a 200,000 rand cap or limit on it, or even a 20% co-payment 
in terms of the cover that they provide. And you need to understand then, in terms of your treatment plan, that may be in excess of a million rand, what that means to you and your, your financial mm. position as a family. And whether you're able to work during that time of treatment and all of that, so all of those things come into play. Absolutely, and that becomes a, a, a very real um, issue for families as well. Okay, right. thanks very much for that. The true cost of cancer goes into the millions, as you've heard Prof Med Medical Scheme CEO Craig Comrie just bringing us uh, some details on that. Thank you.